TeamworkCast.com here with more demonstration videos. This is a little something I like to call the double white devil video. I don't know. I'm just going to show off some of the arena quests from Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. A little bit of a throwback, but it's kind of interesting to see the evolution of the Sword and Shield over the last couple games. Um, not that it'll be too exceedingly different. I guess the biggest thing that you'll notice is there's no shield bashing. Uh, not that I do a whole heck of a lot of shield bashing in Trolltimate anyways. You typically won't do much shield bashing unless you've got some sort of team or something and nobody else is KOing. Otherwise, you probably won't end up using it too much. But in any case, this is a still a pretty decent weapon. I, I think it was really underutilized in Freedom Unite. As well as Try, as well as Portable Third, as well as probably uh, Troll Ultimate. But it's still a, a perfectly good weapon, as long as you're really uh, skillful at, at getting out combos effectively and, and hopefully accurately, then it's, it's just as powerful as any other weapon type. The cool thing about it is, of course, though, is that you can always use items while the weapon is still out. So I don't necessarily think I'm going to be doing that all that much. But uh, certainly against monsters that were weak against sonic bombs or flash bombs or times that you have to bring out uh, weapons really, really quickly, it's, it's very effective. And you'll notice that conveniently, the uh, damage of one large barrel bomb plus, or in this case a slow fly large barrel bomb, or two large barrel bombs uh, as well, is, is enough to trip this Kezu every single time. Easy free hits. And with him, you just need to be, like, super deliberate, because if you get greedy at all, you are going to get hit by a shock attack. It will happen. It will probably happen to me again. <laughs> the hardest part is being able to roll accurately out of the way as well. If there's one thing that I guess I could really emphasize for people that are studying the sword and shield, as you can see right there, or the uh, switch axe. Is, is really getting used to being able to roll in the way that you want. You know, you're not committed to just rolling forward. You can, of course, roll left or right, which makes a big difference, especially depending on where you are in relation to the monster. Of course, with the PSP, it is a little hard. The analog stick isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. I'm just going to try and get a couple hits off on the head, and it's exceedingly fast. And again, that's because this is an arena quest. They have reduced life. You've got pretty decent equipment, and a, uh, the equivalent of two large barrel bomb pluses is, a, is a quite a bit of a damage in low rank in Freedom Unite. As well as in uh, Troll Ultimate, if, if you're ever struggling on a monster, never feel like you're not allowed to use bombs, especially in low rank, they do a significant amount of damage. Once you start getting into high rank and G rank and things like that, you need to start really dropping a lot of bombs for them to be useful, though. One round of sleep bombs never uh, never hurt anyone, though. Especially if you can get eight large barrel bomb pluses at once on anything. Mmm. That's a break. Get yourself a stew. So here's the uh, second of the white devils. The Blaganga. This time, they're giving us a Paralysis Sword and Shield, which wouldn't normally be my first choice if I were to be playing the game solo. While there are some monsters that are fairly weak to Paralysis, uh, generally speaking, you don't really get enough hits off in, in a single player to make it really make it worthwhile. That certain rare, extremely powerful weapons notwithstanding, such as the uh, Darkness or something like that. That's worth it. I'm going to try a uh, remotely similar strategy, although the Laganga really doesn't stand still long enough to get any serious bombs off. So I'm going to wait until I actually get the paralysis off before I drop this large barrel bomb on him. Certainly though, the Sword and Shield is an is a excellent weapon to use against him. As you can see, he is extraordinarily mobile. Probably one of the most mobile monsters that you've ever seen in Monster Hunter. It's always hopping forward or back really quickly. 
His moveset actually isn't all that dissimilar from a Rajong. You can get really used to his moveset. It's actually just kind of like Rajong's, except the Rajong has a lot stronger presence when he's looking at you. He has that one spin attack that comes up fairly quickly, as well as his rampage and punching attack. This guy doesn't normally do much outside of telegraph attack that's going to come forward. It's also kind of interesting to see how status effects weapon work. Essentially, the amount of status effect that a weapon applies I believe also somewhat corresponds to the chance that you have of actually inflicting that attack, that status attack on each hit. So say for instance you have 500 paralysis. That's essentially a, a 50 point infliction of paralysis each time an effect goes off. It's actually a 50% chance that will go off as well. So. Status effects is really something that snowballs rather quickly in Monster Hunter. The uh, more you have, the more likely you are to inflict it, and the more consistent you're, you're able to inflict it as well. Don't ask me why I read that. I read that a long time ago. It may not lo no longer be relevant, but it seems to be the case. That's why the uh, G rank status weapons always seem to be procking non stop. The low rank ones seem to go off just every once in a while. Doesn't help though, because of course monsters build up a tolerance to specific statuses as time goes on. Each infliction increases up usually by 100 to 200 points more that you have to inflict, and of course monsters are always recovering from the status that you do inflict on them. So it never seems like you could really get ahead. Oh, and so just right when I was planning to do another Parabomb, he uh, got away from me. I wouldn't typically recommend Parabombing as a consistent strategy either. If you're going to be using Paralysis to bomb monsters, you may as well be using Sleep. Only because you get a little bonus whenever the, uh, the Sleep goes off. In any case, hope you enjoyed this little uh, two-for-one special. We're about one week away from the release